Now, Sit Down and Shut Up is an exciting new short documentary about when Limerick FC played football giants Real Madrid in the 1980 European Cup. It's a David versus Goliath tale about the opera of football, the city of Limerick, and a game that very few people remember, but three men can never forget. The documentary had its world premiere at the Galway Film Fla last year, and I'm delighted to say that the award-winning filmmaker Keen O'Connor is with us now. Keen, good morning to you. How are you? How's it going? Uh, good to see you guys. If I look tired, it's because it's 4 a.m. where I am, but I'm very happy to be here. We really appreciate you staying up for us. Uh, you're in New York. Yeah, yeah, I just realised when Cullum said uh, you're live from New York, I just realised how glamorous that sounds. But believe me, <laughs> life isn't that glamorous. Um, tell us about this movie and when the idea to make a documentary about this game came to you. Well, so I originally I, I received funding for it from the it's a Limerick Arts Bursary funded short film uh, as part of Creative Limerick, and I received the funding for it in 2019 at the end of 2019. However, I actually, I suppose I got the idea many years previously. I went to school in Limerick. I'm from Kerry, but I went to school in Limerick. And I was in a taxi ride with a taxi driver. And the taxi driver was absolutely obsessed with Limerick FC. And you know how it is with Limerick people. When, once you get them talking, they can't stop talking. And they started telling me all about the history of Limerick. Um, from when Pat Nolan exchanged shirts with Kevin Keegan when Limerick played Southampton to when Sam, uh, Sam Allardyce started his first job for Limerick back in the 90s. And then obviously when Limerick played Real Madrid. And when I heard it from him, I didn't believe him. And then flash forward a couple of years later, I was in film school and I remembered it. I, it that memory had flashed into my head. And I was like, did Limerick actually play Real Madrid or is that some weird fantasy dream I had? I looked it up. When I found out it was true, I just couldn't believe that no one had told the story before and, and that no one had heard about this game, to be honest. So that's kind of where it, what spurred it on. So that happens, right? And with any good idea, you're like, OK, this is definitely going to work. And then uh, in many cases, you can't find good characters to tell the story because, you know, ultimately not everybody is going to perform uh, in front of camera. You, on the other hand, got pretty lucky and found that there were three brilliant stories and three brilliant storytellers ready to speak. Exactly. And, and the thing about this film is what I've realized is that, you know, the three people we had, Des, uh, Des Kennedy, the goal, the striker for the team, Kevin Fitzpatrick, the goal, the goalkeeper, and Jai Matthews, um, the, the left back. I, it could have been any of the players. Do you know what I mean? I met a lot of the players. I met a lot of the fans. The first thing I did was I went to Markets Field. I didn't know anyone. But the first thing I did was I went to Markets Field. And, and even then, it was a hotbed of of history of people who knew about that team and who knew about Limerick and who kind of loved football. It was kind of something else. So I met Des in his garage and from there it all opened up, but it, it really is something, it really is something special out there. It's obviously Limerick is a sporting city. It's got the rugby, the hurling, but around that markets field, Gary Owen area, it really is soccer. Soccer is key. It's funny, Keane, because it's it's a film about a, a particular match, but in the end, it it's it's almost more a film about the people of Limerick and the city of Limerick in itself. Yeah, one hundred percent. And and when we were making the film, obviously Limerick FC were ceasing to exist. This was before Treaty United, and the main thing that stuck out to me was, you know, you have a sporting city without a soccer club, and how sad that was. But at the same time, it shows how strong that community is from the grassroots upwards. That even then, they were still passionate about the club. And obviously, with Treaty now, things are looking a lot better. Um, but it certainly is a document of that time for me. Uh, how easy or otherwise is it to make a film like this? Because, you know, it involves getting footage from the game itself. I, I guess there's a, a bit of um, digging to do to make sure you're allowed to use it and then and actually sifting through the bits that you want to use. I would describe it as kind of like a detective or something like that. You know what I mean? You're basically digging through things, leading things to lead somewhere else. In regards to the footage, I'm not sure how much I can say about the, the footage that, that we use from the game, but essentially a big worry of mine was, did UEFA own the footage? Um, you know, who who owns this footage of the game? But it turned out that they didn't own the footage. It was kind of lost in a continuum because it was such an old game and stuff like that. But even when it came to the other archive, you see a lot of stuff that was from a BBC broadcast um, about Pat Grace, which we only used a small bit of. Uh, we got that from Getty Images, but we only used a small bit, but it was more just kind of, you'd see these small shards of information 
that would kind of tell a greater story. Like I also met some great archivists in Limerick who had just so much to see. And and yeah, it's I'd like to say that when you see the film, it does transport you back to that era, 1980s Limerick. And uh, hopefully the fun of that as much as anything like. So were you always a historian at heart or is that kind of something that you've uncovered about yourself while making this? Could you say that again? Sorry. Were you always a historian at heart? Like, is that who you is? That, are you naturally drawn to something as old as this, or is that something you discovered about yourself making this movie? I don't know if I'd be a historian at heart, but certainly for me, you know, once you have a good story, you want to you want to tell it right. And I think this film would be nothing without the stories of the three three lads. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Um, I think those guys were really what made it human. And my job was really to present them in the best light and to get their story out there, Do you know, because we see a lot of sports documentaries. A lot of sports documentaries can be quite similar, a bit by the books. But the difference is with ours is that you have these three guys who, you know, Des Kennedy still works in his garage. Johnny Matthews is still uh, is still working in in his job. You know, they're still real guys and they really make it because they're so genuine and they just love telling the story. Uh, can you tell us a bit about the match itself and um, not to give too much away, but the match ends up getting played in, in Lansdowne instead of in Limerick. What What's behind that? So essentially, um, it was very controversial at the time. Um, but what you had happening was it should have been played in Towman Park or Markets Field. But Towman Park was known for a lot of pitch invasions. Um, and as a result, back then, UEFA, if there was a pitch invasion back then, the game would be completely called off. And so because of the fears of this, as well as perhaps, uh, you know, some people behind Limerick FC being a bit greedy at the time, they thought if we put it up in Dublin, we can probably get, get more from the gate receipts and we won't worry about the pitch invasions. But this turned into then a protest because the Limerick fans were not happy with this. And it ended up, it's not mentioned in the film, but there was very few people at the game. Apparently the atmosphere was was shocking. But obviously in the film, you don't want your atmosphere for your big game to be shocking. So we kind of left that out. Uh, but that's 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 how it is. And we also got George Hamilton to do the commentary. He didn't comment on the game. However, he was at the game. So we were able to chat about that and he re-recorded some, some commentary afterwards. Right. That's mad that um, Sir Real Madrid couldn't draw a crowd even amongst the Dublin football fans. Yeah, pretty much. Like, I think back then, I mean, keep in mind, you know, football wasn't really shown 24-7 on TV like it is now. And so, as a result, most of the teams that people knew would be Liverpool or Nottingham Forest. These were the teams that people wanted to see from the Dublin crowd. No one really knew who Real Madrid are. And, and Des even says it himself. He didn't know who they were, just that they were this great team, you know. But those guys treated the game like any other game, you know. Was there anything else that kind of surprised you about um, when you started digging? You're like, hang on, this is mad. Certainly, uh, to be honest, the the the, the Pat Grace uh, snack box KFC stuff because I I'm a snack box man. I won't lie. I I'm not really a spice bag guy. I'm more of a classic snack box guy. So that's the I, correct I, answer, I by always... the way, Kian. That's the correct answer. Well done. <laughs> well, I was always intrigued by uh, by by snack boxes and how the hell that thing came to be in Ireland, and I wanted to do a documentary on that secretly in in my heart of hearts. Like, but then I found out that Pat Grace he invented the snack box. He got the KFC licensing. He opened Chicken Hut in Limerick, and there were lines out the door. And that was kind of uh, it was just very intriguing for me. And I also learned when filming how a snack box was made, which is shown in the film in, in grisly detail. What's your favourite thing about the snack box, Kian? I'm not sure. See, I'm in New York now, so there's a lot of really good fried chicken here. But the thing about a snack box is, you know, you the, the chips, the chunky chips mixed with the breaded chicken on a Sunday morning, I, or Sunday evening, not morning, Jesus Christ. That's, that's <laughs> it's more the vibe than the actual taste. I want to hear this. This this is the next documentary. Like, I, we shouldn't put you off doing that one. I think, obviously, I'll go for it. definitely do it. <laughs> we'll see about that, lads. You know what I mean. If uh, if the story is there, I'll, I'll tell the story. You know, the game itself could have been could. Have, I mean, the result could have gone more famous more famously for Limerick, I guess. Key and Des Kennedy, the man you, you you spoke to, had a had an early goal, but uh, sadly, that's not the way it panned out. No, and I don't want to get into it too much, just because we have the film. But uh, <laughs> it, I mean, the game, the guys played the game of their lives, and a lot of that was because 
Um, Owen Hand was the coach. They were a League of Ar Ireland winning side back then, you know, for the Champions League. It was an open draw and, and Limerick had won the League of Ireland. And that was down to excellent talent, but also excellent coaching and excellent fitness. I think that's what kind of caught Real Madrid off guard from the get-go. It wasn't just, they weren't just a minnow that backed down. They immediately kind of played the game. But, you know, at the end of the day, Madrid's fitness were probably a bit higher. And also there was a dubious penalty decision, which is featured in the film. It's funny, Owen Hand and his relationship with the Irish footballing public, it obviously sours after the Ireland job, which is unfair because, you know, he helps build a lot of what, Jack Charlton ends up uh, bringing to success and so he's, he's an interesting character kind of this is in some ways the peak moments of him that get him the Ireland job eventually I'd agree with that totally in regards to how I mean I wasn't alive back then uh, when Ireland played under Owen Hand but I would certainly agree that he 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 built the foundations with the Ireland team Jack Charlton's Ireland team and he had them playing really well and I met Owen and he was he was really lovely to talk to but I personally wanted to keep it with the players and have their perspective. Do you know what I mean? But Owen was brilliant to chat to. Yeah. What are you working on now, Keen? At the moment, I'm in New York. Uh, I'm working on a short here in New York. Uh, I don't want to get into it too much, but I that I am thinking of going back into the old fiction, sports fiction. Uh, it's just a case of finding the right story and uh, one that kind of interests me as much as anything. Because if you're not interested in the story probably won't be an interesting film. What was the vibe you got, Cian, from, from chatting to Limerick people? Like, Limerick is obviously a, a sporting mecca in Ireland in, in many ways. Like, you've, you've got the rugby fans, you've got the hurling, and, and I, I guess soccer in recent years has taken a back seat, but I, I'd imagine the soccer faithful in, in, in the county and in the city particularly uh, are quite loyal. 100%. And uh, we see that with Treaty. You know what I mean? Treaty were started in 2021, um, and it's a, it's a supporter-ran club made in the wake of Limerick FC's demise um, and I think the whole you know I'm, I'm sure you guys have chatted about Treaty before they're currently in the semi-finals of the FAI Cup and and the, the support group behind it is absolutely insane you know people want a soccer club in, in their city in their county and I was just at a fundraiser for Treaty in New York Dara Fitzpatrick which is Kevin's son he, um, he started a fundraiser to get membership going because it is a nonprofit club and to kind of bring people together. And even in New York, there are people who gathered who want to get behind this. And yeah, I mean, their, their aim is to just bring soccer to, to Limerick in the Midwest and give young people an opportunity to play and be coached. So that's my answer to that anyway. <laughs> uh, can I just ask you about, uh, you know, as somebody who's interested in telling stories, um, I, I'm interested in, like, so you said you were uh, born in Kerry, went to school in Limerick. Yeah. Is soccer your own first love as a sport? So I, 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 you know, film is my first love. You know what I mean? I used to hate, I grew up in Kerry, which is sport mad. I used to, I, I used to hate football. I won't lie to you. Uh, do you know what I mean? Because I was a film kid. But I got into soccer later in life, to be honest with you, when I was in editing and making films, I, I found myself watching the Champions League in around 2017. And I kind of found a newfound appreciation for the sport in general. And it sounds pretentious, but I was able to kind of see, you know, the opera behind it. So my perspective on, on the soccer in this film, that's why there's animation used. I wanted to kind of capture the cinema sport of soccer and the, the almost ballet quality, you know, because... I always say my favorite part of a sports game is the ending when uh, when it's a when you see the players and their reactions rather than the goals, you know. I, I look, I totally agree. There was a period where in the GAA, for example, you used to be able to get into the winners and losers dressing rooms after every match, and then they realised that like no other sports doing this anymore. What they do in soccer is they put everybody in front of a, an advertising hoarding, and then you get film yeah. and you get the branding. And um, now they still do it in America in professional sports. You can walk into the locker room and talk to anybody who will talk to you. And I think a little bit of the magic is gone. But I'm just interested in your perspective as a storyteller about League of Ireland and the stories that exist there and still as a country for whatever reason we're not quite happy to support this league which is our own people who grew up here who played football here who are a representation of our football culture I don't know I don't know if you've thought about that at all if the, if it struck you that's... Yeah I mean 
when I started telling my friends about this uh, this story about when Limerick played Real Madrid, my, my friend from Atlone immediately said, well, actually, Atlone Town played Milan and they beat Milan in 1955. You know, that's just an example of the other history. Um, but even beyond that, you have the football today. I mean, we saw that wonderful Dundalk FC side from a, from a couple of years past. And throughout making it and from meeting the supporters who go to the games every single week, it's a pity that we don't talk about Liga Ireland enough and it's a pity that we don't talk about the great history of these clubs that we have and really embrace it, you know, because the best thing about soccer is the communities. It's about coming together and going to the games. And I don't know how you'd fix that. I don't know how you get people going to games or watching games, but there's potential there, do you know what I mean? And there's a potential to bring people together, you know. Well, I think telling the stories of the history is actually going to be an important part of that and getting people to think that they're part of a continuum that has incredible history like the, the stuff that you've excavated. So, listen, you've been great with your time. Thanks so much for getting up in the middle of the night. We'll let you go and get some sleep. Um, and congratulations on a great film. Much. Thank you very much. Uh, can I just say the title? The title is, is in reference to Stand Up and Fight, uh, the play about when Munster played the All Blacks. Uh, this is... I decided sit down and shut up would be the Limerick FC version of that. So very I good. I'd give a bit of trivia. Yeah. Thank excellent. you very much, guys. Thanks Absolute a pleasure. Thank you. Cheers. Bye bye. That is uh, filmmaker Keen O'Connor live from New York.